Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Leave this in as well, future Tony, when you're editing this. Yo, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Future Tony, turn around right now, look behind you. Oh my god, it's Kai. I said future Tony. <laughs> but, well, am I always future oh, Tony? No, you're present Tony. Uh, no, you are present Tony. I mean, technically so, everything you're looking at is in the past because the speed of light is technically not instantaneous. So technically everything you see is in the past. Fun the present, fact, but that's is stupid, not. and we're that's... not worrying about that right now. We're getting that's stupid. And you should be quiet. We're, we're getting metaphysical and existential and all that good stuff, which is extra funny because I'm here as a sock puppet. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes it better. Welcome back for the final day of MadCon 2022. I am definitely keeping that little part in, at least. Um, today's uh, theme is breaking through barriers. Uh, our first theme was pushing the boundaries or pressing the envelope. Uh, the second day was um, what the hell did we call the second day? We called it so finding your audience, <laughs> duh. Because it was all about finding your audience. Isn't that crazy? Wild. <laughs> I've been moderating all weekend. My brain is mush, so I'm ready for another full day of this. It's gonna be really, really, really super exciting. I am joined by some wonderful people. We have Kai. Who are you? I'm Kai. Uh, I do uh, Chain of Being, which is a mythic sci-fi audio drama uh, that's been going for like two years or something. Uh, I'm also a sound artist and sound editor and sound designer, and I like I like sound a lot. It's, it's a big thing in my life, and I'm thinking about it a lot. It's great. <laughs> you think in sound. You think in stereo. You think in Dolby 7.1. Dolby Atmos is your I live, brain. I live in a million point one. That's what? my idea. A million point one. You think we'll just every is... sound source in the world, <laughs> every po infinite point one, every possible angle, the real analog, the, the, the friends we made along the way, the true analog, the real analog is the friends we made along the way. Can you write that down? That's actually beautiful. <laughs> is it? <laughs> and you may be wondering oh, well. why there is a sock puppet on stream. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, you might know me as Guy from Ghosts on a Train. Uh, this is what I do at my off time. <laughs> I am Sock Dudums, the <laughs> internet sock puppet. That's and basically it. So where are you found and what, like, how do people uh, enjoy your content? What okay. is your content? Uh, enjoy, we're using very loosely here, but <laughs> I enjoy, enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitch. You can find me at sock underscore dudums you could find me on twitter at sock puppet tuber because there's no other ones like me is fun is cool you, do, do you plan on having different uh like sock skins to like, uh, like costumes to change into eventually yes uh the thing is i rigged this myself and rigging is a pain in the ass yep. so like <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll we'll get there uh it just it's gonna take some time if you could make like if you could have different costumes and it wouldn't be an issue what would you want okay so i've got three other kind of like types of socks and then i'm gonna i'm just gonna post this here you can include this or not but i'm going to describe it the prompt was goth sock okay uh, <laughs> So this is done by my friend <laughs> Noodle, aka Brothel. Oh my god! Oh yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's so good. Holy fuck! Uh, the problem is because this is just a static image. Like, yeah, cutting and rigging it is going to be impossible. So I'm <laughs> I'm working on it, but that's gonna take some time. I, I can probably make it in vector for you. We can collab on this. This would be a there good collab. <laughs> incredible you should do a sock monkey one too if you had it because that's just like that's classic sock you know it's the sock it is monkey. classic yeah. when i was in japan i saw that they sold these like uh toe socks that went around each individual toe uh and yes it, i found oh, them I weirdly that. comfortable i think you should do a toe sock version <laughs> it's just a bunch of like oh my God. Isn't, here's the thing isn't that just a glove like, 
<laughs> kind of, yeah. That's true, actually, like, yeah. I mean, this is yeah. a hand puppet. Like, wouldn't that just be a point. glove? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm coming I... At you from the beach. <laughs> I remember having a friend who had, like, these runner shoes, uh, mm. but, like, oh, God, had the individual toes. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. They, they make you feel yeah, weird and uncomfortable. Cool. Oh boy, much bigger crowd than yesterday. Greg, would you like to join in on the fun again? We can hear morning Every, voice Greg again. Let's just have let's just have everyone with their mics on because like we know Rebecca as well. So like it's might as well just you know I want Rebecca. No, I'm 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 just I'm mostly just popping in briefly because I have I'm I'm skedaddling for a bit for the uh the morning. That's not morning voice, Greg. Um, what the hell? Who are you? It's not. I've I've, I've woken up. I haven't just woken up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an absolute nightmare. It was end. amazing. Last yesterday morning, Greg popped in. And was like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" I'm like, "Whoa, whoa!" Wow, <laughs> I was very surprised. Full octave down. And so we we have a mystery voice coming from the 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 chat. Who who are you, mystery voice? Oh, what? Uh, hi, I'm Banani. Uh, I'm a writer. I'm a designer for TTRPGs. Uh, I write lots of things. I. Yes, those things explicitly. Are you there. also a graphic designer? Um, <laughs> I have that capacity. Oh, okay. I thought I saw in your bio, like, graphic designer or something. I've been meaning to poke around at, at that side I of your a, art. I am a front-end uh, web dev ah. by trade. So, but, so... Uh, Donati, Donati's got a bunch of hats on. Donati's stacking more hats on. So many hats. <laughs> Yeah, how are you juggling all these hats? Um, by doing none of them. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> jack of, um, jack of yes, several have, trades. Yes, I have acquired um, various skills of various trades. Um, art is sort of my weakest, but only because I don't do it enough. <laughs> Me too. Mm. I feel that really hard oh, and uh, we had another mystery voice and that was uh, Greg from yesterday morning's opening ceremony with me where we talked Dragon Strike which is not D&D but made by the same people as D&D and it's like this a it, really simple it's version of D&D it's a very simple version and there's like DHS trying to explain the whole thing to you and it's lifting my head in free I'm going I'm making a thing about it it's gonna it's gonna come to FN show offs I cannot uh, when wait. I'm, when I'm done with it, um, I need to, I need to get that off out of out of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually yeah, really I'm, excited I'm for that. A little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for it too. But yeah, I'm just I just just popping in briefly, uh, just because I saw people were hanging out and I was like, oh, I want I want to listen to the panel. Um, yeah, I will. Kai, I really like really like the new piercing. Thank uh, you. I know you got, yeah, I know you swapped out styles. <laughs> Big fun. And it shines as well. When it was dark yesterday, it was just like, I, or rather, I was on a video call with Eve, and uh, it was the only thing that was appearing on the screen. So it was just this like glinting kind of, yeah. It's a very like <laughs> weird or like Rudolph adjacent power. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Rudolph adjacent is not something I expected to hear pretty much ever, especially I mean, like, not if I had in, like, room in my bio, like... Tony. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> what, what, what is your Twitter bio, bio right now? Is it is it it's like just, actually it, professional just... or is it wild as shit? No, it's professional. Oh, it's it like is. A, just a, what is it? It's um, I make lots of sound with various implements. I make chain of being, he, they, writer, sound designer, sound artist, and editor, student at LCC. That's it's so boring. <laughs> it's like, mm. yeah. You know, I was gonna yell at you about Oxford comma, but sound artist and editor is technically probably one thing. So you get oh, away. Oh, true. No, you're right. No, 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 no. I think it's. I think it's correct. No, wait, no, that's intentional because it's sound. I'm a sound editor and a sound. Yeah, artist. yeah. That's that's why yeah, I was yeah. like, I I will refrain from attacking because that yeah, is actually. Correct. Yeah, Tony. Get look, off my I, arms. look. I don't get many dubs a day, and so I thought I had a dub, and I didn't. Hey, so. <laughs> That's why you don't have many dubs. Come on, man. Uh, dub yeah, well, Idolo, am I right? Or whatever the fuck. What, what were we talking about? Dub Idolo, you got it. it. That's what Kylie called it. Dub Idolo? Idolo? Probably. I've literally only ever seen it spelled. I just assumed it was Idolo. So it, if, if I uh, say it, that's how it's spelled. Did we encode, like, decode what Idolo meant? Mm, no. I don't. Oh, maybe we did and I've forgotten. So it's just complete fucking gibberish jargon? 
No, it's probably got an origin, but I don't know what it is. And I've only ever seen it in that context. Yeah. Um, in those memes, people say double the time, but not, yeah, yeah. Not the um, have a good, have a good morning opening panel, cool. everybody. Have a good uh, con thing. I'm gonna skedaddle for now. Yeah. I love your setup, Spock. Um, That's a very nice microphone you have. Thank you. <laughs> it's very green. It, it matches the button, the, the the image star and stars button on the other side. I'd like to actually use one of those microphones one day. Oh, well, what are those called? Uh, oh, don't ask me that, Tony. <laughs> I, don't, I just know them as like the I WWE microphones. They're fucking... Oh, I, I would listen to a whole documentary about it as well, about them and like why they were so famous. I think it'd be really fun to do an effing show off that's only with like vintage sound equipment. Yeah, I just get my tape machine out and uh Yeah. I can <laughs> say record all the sound effects. Oh yeah. it's a sure. Of course it's a sure. Uh, make it like a, like a like a like a a very time specific piece and actually only use authentic equipment from that time. That might be really expensive, mm. but like I don't Yeah, probably. Let's let's do it authentic to the sixteen hundreds and we'll just shout it in <laughs> a barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. No, 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 we have to get those like the the old like the primitive version of like a like a disc. It's like the clay disc that they used to record sounds it's into. Wax wax cylinder yeah. audio drama. <laughs> yeah, like. uh, could three D print a fake one just for the vibe? No, 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 no. we're authentic here. We're mm-hmm. extra, we Rebecca. Around, yes. We have to spend thousands of dollars on vintage audio equipment for a fifteen minute FN show off. To go to some randoms like <laughs> man's house in the Midlands to use his microphone and possibly get axe murdered so we can record an epic fucking historical. <laughs> yo, yo but we the FN <laughs> show off though. <laughs> hey, listen, Amy. This is this is a tax write off. Don't worry. This is a tax yeah, yeah. Write-off. We can write it off. We yeah, all know no, that writing it off makes it free. That's just how money works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like right, the, the government pays you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's free like money. charitable donations. You actually make money on them. It's not yeah, how exactly. it works. It's like yeah, I, yeah. I save a billion dollar in taxes by donating a million dollars. That's how that. That's how that works, right? <laughs> I really don't know how it works, but I can't imagine you can ever make. That's this is completely irrelevant. We're talking about podcasting today. There might actually <laughs> be like grants for using like authentic audio equipment, though. So like, Yo. Eh. I mean, honestly, I think that would be a fun FN show off. We're talking about breaking the bat, we're pushing the envelope by using <laughs> stuff from a century ago. I think that's really yeah. cool. We're also talking <laughs> about um, yeah, like accessibility later. And what's more accessible than equipment from like sixty <laughs> years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> Before the age of UX. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we've uh, we've had a really good panel, a set of panels this weekend. I feel like we've answered a lot of questions um, mm. pretty well. Let me let me open up my super bright tab. Oh, and oh my god, god, god it hurts! It hurts. Uh, there's there has got to be a way I can adjust this right now. All right, all right. Let's go. This is great. Is this fun? This looks good. So much fun. This is only this is making great audio. This is only seventy three percent brightness. That is this amazing. Is the ghost woman that stands in this room. This. Oh, so if yeah. you pumped it up to like one hundred percent, would it just like immediately <laughs> blind you? Flash back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sunburn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Just so pay like a sunburn from my flash bang going out. <laughs> All right, I've put my monitor down to twenty percent. Oh fuck! There we go. All right, I, that is much better on my retinas. Okay, so the uh, the uh, first day was um, new ways to tell stories, pushing the envelope, that kind of thing, and we opened oh. up with the narrative, um, and we had uh, Christoph. Christoph Laputka, who is from the Leviathan Chronicles, um, has this big, awesome, open, like, big, awesome world and setting up different RSS feeds for different kind of entry points into the universe, different framing devices, different um, cast and vibes, uh, but all existing in the same kind of universe. So it's like very large um, storyboard um, that was really, really fun to listen to. Banani, you're actually a part of that one. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, what, so, do you think you uh, you kind of learned or were inspired by anything in that panel? Um, uh, you you come from a bit more of like the RPG and video game kind of side of things than I guess audiobooks, but but what did you kind of learn during that? Uh, um, God, I'm terrible at like at learning sometimes. Um, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I will say though that um, 
I think they're just, I guess, just how far back and how far reaching um, both the effects of and the history of like audio drama it is. Um, and just like how that's sort of manifested over the years, right? Because like it's it's never been like one simple thing. It's just it's bloomed out into all of these different kinds of stories and uh, and presentations to become become a sort of uh, unique thing onto itself. Yeah, it's definitely evolved from, you know, we, we, we've spent a lot of talk throughout the weekend about kind of the origin of all this with uh, old school, old time radio, radio plays um, and like World War, um, War of the Worlds and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I have said World War Z, that is not correct. I think that was a book that turned into a movie that apparently was nothing like the book. Um, yeah, yep. <laughs> <I'm told. laughs> Uh, but you know, it's it's just, it's definitely gone through renaissance and metamorph like a, lot, a big metamorphosis uh, morphosis throughout the years. And um, you know, when we think about modern day audio dramas, that's really only maybe like fifteen years old. Um, mm. uh, about what we think about audio dramas, and even since then, there's been this massive resurgence um, unto itself during the pandemic, um, yeah. where you know a lot of people were like, "I'm in a pandemic." I can't leave my house. So what do I do? I can buy a microphone and I have a computer. I can make uh, an audio book or an audio drama or um, start writing. You know, I feel like as terrible as the pandemic's been, it's definitely led to a big bloom of um, yeah. creativity. Um, a panel we have today is team kind of distance, how people have kind of bridged the gap between uh, space and time zones, not actual time. Um, that'd be cool though. If we figured that out during the pandemic. Hmm. Uh, but mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, so that's it, it's been very yeah, interesting yeah. to see how it's all developed. Um, I wish Jack was uh, could be here to uh, listen in and and give his um, side of things. I, I actually spent like a good hour talking to Jack uh, last weekend when we were setting up mm. the Discord and making these plans. And that man has so much knowledge of this industry go, starting with the radio plays because he grew up mm. on like a farm in Nova Scotia in the middle of nowhere and all they had was radio they didn't have television um mm. and and he literally grew up on these old time radio plays and is so extremely knowledgeable about uh, it all um so yeah shout out Jack Ward of Audio Mutual and Sonic Society sorry Mutual Audio Network Audio Mutual is their Twitter tag uh, Twitter handle. Um, he's incredible. Um, what have you, so Kai, what have you learned about the narrative of like chain of being, like as you've kind of been, cause you started what, uh, 15 years old with it. How has that changed for yeah. you and your approach? I think, yeah, I think, well, all, to, to be fair, it was, it was started thinking about and, and creating the world at 15 and then actually started producing it around 17. Um, but I think, I think, it's it's original idea way back right at the beginning when I was 15 was more definitely more Night Vale inspired and I think more like these are the daily events of a single place and I think since then it's definitely taken on a more as as loaded as the term is like cinematic kind of like feel to it and the fact that they're going to lots of places because I don't know I took I started to feel that like you know you you don't have to pay for CGI and you don't have to pay for all these like visual effects. So you can just kind of say whatever you want, as long as you can describe it and sound design it to a sort of convincing uh, extent. Like you can just have anything you want ever, which I think is kind of why I, I sort of, I feel like it's, it's quite good for sci-fi. Cause like a lot of sci-fi TV shows, I think for me at least suffer from just not like, like, like budget problems and not looking that great or like the aliens always look a bit bleh. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, and then that's not to say there aren't good sci-fi shows out there that do that, but it takes a lot of money to do that. Whereas I think you can very easily do sci-fi, just like massive, you know, galaxy spanning stories just with the right sound design, mm -hmm. um, which is why I, I, I want to kind of do more with season two for Chain of Being. But definitely, definitely, um, yeah, I think I think taking it from just like a quite small thing to just this grand sort of universe. Um, yeah, that's for me anyway. So when you first started, I, I, were you more focused on world building? Because because like in its current mm -hmm. state, it's very focused on Adam, and you still have a lot of world building. But it's about yeah. Adam and and um, Ovi Nadal and 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 their kind of yeah. that that kind of relationship there. Um, was it 
did Adam like kind of just accidentally become the main character or was he always intended to kind of be this yeah at, at the front of the scene? He he was always going to be the main character, but I think you can kind of tell as well that right at the beginning he's kind of like the sort of the eyes through which the audience gets to see the world type thing. And then I sort of I had a really good bit of criticism from someone um, from the the laughably dapper people who do really good um, like comedy audio drama stuff, and they said basically like I think you need to put more personality into him and make him more of a character as opposed to an observer. And so I started to try. I'm still trying to do that because you know. Um, it's it's just one of my weaknesses, I think, is character stuff, which I'm trying to get better at. But um, I think he then became more of a character with like an arc and things to deal with, as opposed to just like, man, I'm here and this this shit's crazy, huh? Instead of him like suddenly changing into, you know, a person that like needs to develop. And you can, I mean, I feel like in the last few episodes, it starts to come through a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has opinions about things and he sort of disagrees with people and he's kind of very sort of, I don't know, passionate. And uh, yeah, but he was he was always a little bit fucked up, but oh for more, sure. Right now. Uh, have you always um, done all the writing yourself? Do you send off the script to anyone to review? Maybe before you start on the episode, or yeah, I I mean I've always I've always there's one standalone episode that my brother wrote, um, but every episode has been written by me. I think there's maybe one paragraph in one thing that my dad wrote because he 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 writes um, sort of on the side kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I'll send it off to my dad. I'll send it off to friends. Whoever will basically like have it and they'll just like look through send some notes and stuff and um yeah i think notes i find i find notes very helpful but you know you, you got that imposter syndrome you have to get over and i think the best way is just to send it to as many people and if everyone goes yeah this is good then surely they can't all be wrong or they can't all be trying to convince you that you're better than you are <laughs> so eventually it's got to be like right so yeah i think the more people that you can get to like check it out i think is is good um but yeah awesome um sock uh through the through the media that you like to consume and any um world building you you've done what have you learned about narrative design what do you appreciate in a good narrative uh well i enjoy the the whiplash that i cause just by being here yes that's that's Absolutely. very fun so, just going, so sock is just, so... <laughs> just like just a sock i can with a see the moment where like Kai just just like it just, it just broke. So like oh, fuck it out. <laughs> All right, go on. So good. Uh, for for narrative design and kind of narrative building and growth in my kind of so my, my VTuber journey has been very short. Uh I started in the beginning of May. Uh it is now the middle of July, so only like two and a half months. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I have noticed is a lot of people want to get like really kind of high concept with what it is that they want to be doing. Mm. The problem with doing that kind of as a VTuber, where like your biggest kind of market and the thing that you're marketing this isn't really answering your question but i'm going to go into it anyway oh, it's all good <laughs> but your biggest kind of point of marketing and your biggest kind of thing that you've got to advertise is yourself your design like what your aesthetic is everything about that so everyone there's a lot of people that i've noticed that try and do something really really high concept and try and get real complicated with it and it just doesn't work because, like, you can't really tell what it is that they're going for at a glance. Mm. Like, there's so many where it's just kind of, when you look at them, they're just like, anime girl, anime boy, mm. furry, mm. demon. Yeah. That's, that's kind of it. it. It's a bit hard. It, it, it's kind of like that surface level is, like, your first instinct and... and, and... Not everyone's going to want to be like, let's go into the bio and see exactly what this is. Like, you kind of get that one. Oh, bye-bye hat. Uh, you <laughs> and saw it go into a trash bin. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, you do kind of have that one, like, first impression. And then, like, I'm sure as a creator as well, always constantly having to explain what your character is and, like, the significance of their design or their, their if there is a backstory. I can imagine that gets pretty yeah. exhausting. And there must be something really just like liberating about being like i'm a sock puppet yeah yeah, yeah. i have googly eyes like the <laughs> there's there's something very liberating about it but also like you know exactly what my situation is you know exactly what my deal is uh 
th this is kind of taking something, but I think one of the most important things that you can kind of do with any sort of media is make it readable. Like, when someone just kind of looks at it and, like, get what it is right away. Like, if someone, like, sees Chain of Being, sees the kind of, like, logo that you've got, mm. uh, like, they kind of get it. But they, yeah. they, they get, like, all right, sci-fi, uh, kind of, there's, like, a kind of biblical bent, bent to it. Heavy <laughs> into the audio design, but uh, very, very, very artsy. Mm. Like, you, you can kind of... You can pick that up at a glance. Mm, uh, yeah. Or something like uh, Welcome to Night Vale. You can tell pretty easily like what the situation is. Like yeah. This is, this is kind of like horror-themed, but it's not taking itself super seriously. Mm. But it's still a lot of intrigue and kind of mystery, confusion. Uh, those are the only ones I can, I'm can. i going to go with for right now because I could literally go on forever. Two but... only audio dramas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 those are the all two those. audio dramas. Those yeah. are the two. Uh, it's just us. So this, this kind of then touches into a little bit what we talked about yesterday in uh, finding your audience. And uh, a big a big part of what we talked about is like how easily digestible is it is your project your media at a glance so we talked about elevator pitches and that kind of thing and super suits is a law firm set in a superhero world that very much easily kind of paints a picture of what it is obviously you can give more specific examples and like be like oh you know it's it follows harper and their journey to becoming a lawyer yeah. like there is a longer mm -hmm. elevator pitch to that but at the end of the day it is an audio mm -hmm. comedy about a law firm set in a superhero world very simple very effective uh ghost on a train is is as as uh, Benadi so aptly put, is yeah. cyberpunk Ghostbusters on a train? Like, or sorry, yeah, Tesla Punk. Cyberpunk. Yes, yes, Tesla Punk uh, Ghostbusters uh, on a train. But like, Ghost mm -hmm. on a Train describes a vast majority of of the show, especially right? in the earlier mm -hmm. episodes, where you are the line bulls and you are literally security guards disposing of uh, supernatural yeah. occurrences on a train. It very easily uh, Lavender Tavern, queer fairy tales. Boom. That's like it, it immediately describes the project. And so I think um, that is a big part about like finding your audience is like how easily can you explain to them your project? And something I want to work with you on, Kai, is like how do we aptly describe chain of being to someone? Because mythic sci fi can mean a lot. It doesn't it yeah. doesn't fully describe that you have these uh judeo-christian um um and other um religious influences from other polytheistic religions and and you have mm. like angels but it's also spaceships and like you you have yeah. all these themes how do we summarize that and i think that's going to be something that uh, you and i can work on to kind of sell chain of being um yeah to because and we also you have a heavy focus on it's an audiophile experience it is a high yeah. quality it's, it's the thing I'm, i feel like i'm doing maybe well no i'm not doing too many things but i'm doing a lot of things and I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of things done with it so i think it's difficult to like i think the most important stuff maybe we, we would refer to and the things that would draw people in and then i think the audio and then the the mix of sci-fi and uh, mythology, mm -hmm. I think would be the main ones because then everything else can kind of you can come into that and, and look, like get it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I didn't start going, start it going like, oh, this is going to be like the you know like really high sort of fidelity type sound design. I think I just started doing that and realized, oh, actually, I can't. I wouldn't. I don't want to release anything that I don't I haven't put like loads of effort into sound wise. And your relationship um, with sound has only gotten stronger because you started this project when you were like freaking 15 and then started actually making yeah. episodes at 17. Like You were still in, yeah. in, in grade school. Like You're still like yeah. you are 20 yeah. years old now, right? Yeah. You're 20 now, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, next year you can come to the states and we can drink. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's the thing. I was gonna go, we we're gonna go to New York. I was like, well, I won't be able to drink, so it's gonna be a weird, <laughs> be a weird one. Um, but yeah, no, it's. I think. I think it's sound has become more a part of it because of the show as well. Like, I mean, I've gone to uni and that was a massive, you know, for sound and that was a huge like addition of like, I'm surrounded by people talking about and involved in sound all the time, and I'm surrounded by this equipment, and all I'm thinking about is sound. It was kind of inevitable that I would then go into my main sort of life's work with that mm -hmm. in it so i think i think they kind of like have been building each other up a little bit like one's dragged one up then one's pulled up with the other it's kind right. of 
I'm not sure what came first, the podcast or my love of sound. Really, I think I think they're very simultaneous in that. Um, I think there's yeah. a lot of complex works out there, and I, and I think of books. I'm a big fan of the Wheel of Time series, and I can't aptly describe Wheel of Time in yeah. one sentence because it is a fucking 13 novel long series that I've only yeah. made it through halfway, and that is more books than I. That is more content in those seven books than I've ever read in my whole life. I'm not a not a huge reader, um, yeah. and I couldn't a- accurately describe what Wheel of Time is because there are. There are hundreds of storylines and interconnected yeah. character relationships. It is super complex, but it is also considered a massive historical work. You know, you can boil down Lord yeah. of the Rings kind of easily. A hobbit is given a ring yeah, and you have, yeah. they must destroy it as a ring of evil. Like there, there is the elevator pitch of that. But also it's like that definitely minimizes a lot of Tolkien's mm. um, yeah. work to it. It's, I found- it's very hard to be... It's very hard to like explain a thing, especially if it's something you're really passionate about, and not be reductive. But mm-hmm. at yeah. the same time, you kind of have to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, if like, you want to explain just... it in a reasonable amount of time. Right. We have yeah, to, you got like, five seconds. Oh, sorry. Go on, Banani. Oh no, I was just I I basically said just like it, it's sort of just the necessity of it, right? Like summarizing yeah. requires you to chop things down. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm thinking I, about my favorite like films and TV shows or TV shows I find really interesting, and I, I really struggle to summarize them. Like, I, I like my my current favorite film is like Annihilation. I don't. I is it sci-fi? Mm. Oh, Annihilation, so good. I yeah, am so it's, it's, team it's Annihilation now. It's the fucking greatest. It's it's hugely influential for me, just like in lots of different ways. But I, would you call it sci-fi, or would you? Call, it's it's kind of like cosmic horror, but not. Not in the traditional sense it of cosmic horror. It does sit between it's... like, it's, yeah. it's cerebral and it, it, it. The whole movie is is just a big analogy, and I don't want to spoil it. But like, you know, the the whole movie is an analogy for something that plagues our society every yeah. day and, and and affects loved ones. But it, and it takes the form of sci-fi, cosmic horror. Like I, I'd say it's yeah, it's very realist, psychedelic. Yeah. It's very cerebral in a lot of ways. Oh. Um, you have to be careful to like, kind of mix kind of the like the genre and like the actual like theming because like those it's probably like more complicated than you it's less complicated than i think you're making it out but also like being able to make those kind of shortened like back Mm. of the book kind of quick summaries is a skill unto itself yeah. Yeah. And I, I think um, we're, we're so used to comparative analysis. So it's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's you know, it's the Dark Souls of blah or it, it's yeah, like Game it's of Thrones in space. You know what I mean? Like we, we're, yeah, we're so yeah. used to taking already and that's not a bad method, but like no, as, but it is as a marketing guy, like you don't ever want to pitch your product like someone else's product. Like that's that's mm-hmm. like a big no no because you don't want to you don't want to clout chase. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. Uh, but it often does mm-hmm. help under uh, people understand what you're going for because people, if you say oh it's you know it, it, it it's two dimensional Dark Souls like that paints a pretty good picture. Oh this game's hard as fuck. Okay I got it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Or it's like okay you know or like oh it's you know it's a fantasy setting or it's cyberpunk Dark Souls like that that paints a picture. Um, even it, it, why use more words when less do trick or whatever Kevin says from yeah. the office. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I'd like to say something though mm-hmm. um, which is this is a bit of a, more of a literary thought but like I think it, it can apply at any point. Genre is sort of bullshit. Like, Thank you. Uh, I'm about this way with it, music. Like, it's not. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. like a thing that doesn't exist. But like the idea that there is like a a prototypal, like an archetypal thing that all uh, all things come from, um, yeah. is not how that works. Like genre yeah. is like a collection of similar ideas that we associate um, just part of partly for convenience, but also just for like um, from there, like we it helps us uh, assign different ideas and messages to these different things. Mm-hmm. It's a classification, not like a actual like guideline. 
Yeah, yeah very it's descriptive. Yep. Yep. I, I think we so often want to put things in boxes and label them just for ease of explanation and, and yeah. understanding. Like and also a lot of people like will um like oh that's blank i'm not into blank type of thing like it kind of yeah. helps them just put up these like barriers of like what they do and do not want um like oh i don't really like and then i'm guilty of this too i'm like oh i don't really care too much for sci-fi that is such a blanket statement that is in hindsight like really just dumb yeah. because i obviously enjoy a lot of sci-fi stuff um but like you know if given a um i i think like in some ways like that classification can help people decide what they want to listen to because if you give me an option between listening to something fantasy and listening to something sci-fi i may lean into fantasy even though this if the sci-fi thing is going to be a better experience yeah um just because i immediately associate i love high fantasy that is that is my type of jam um yeah well that also gets into like genre trappings and like obviously like having these kind of descriptors and being able to break them down does make things easier like this there is a point to why we do it yes sure. but you are right genre banana you are right genres are dumb they should not limit your creative and listening potential because you should just make whatever the fuck you want and and it should stand on itself because it's your art and like you don't need to compare it to something else you don't need to um if, if there are parallels you can make the help people understand what your art is then that's fine but you shouldn't be like i want to make the the dark souls of tabletop chess like, like you know like you know <laughs> like you, you shouldn't aim to emulate mm. something intentionally to chase on its coattails you know mm -hmm. yes that being said if i want an elf in something like you're not going to stop me from having an elf okay that's oh yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah absolutely I, the original I, chain of being universe had like all the fantasy races in it as well um like i originally decided that i was gonna have like elves and tieflings and stuff but i don't know i don't know why i didn't do that in the end i think i think it was too science fantasy then for me i think i mm -hmm. wanted it to be a little bit more my own thing but i do love tieflings a lot oh, so me too <laughs> i might just name well, them something else i love my baby my, my rash act that amy that made for me um, oh, yeah? they weren't oh yeah yeah fun history fact about tieflings cool. they weren't originally like horned like neon skinned individuals with tails like they were just like weird interplanar humanoids that weren't mm. necessarily like a player yeah. race uh, when they were introduced so like you could have a, a tiefling could be someone with like feathers or like uh, digital grade okay. legs or something cool. like that um, and I think 4E sort of just sort of, if I remember right, yeah, the story of 4E sort of like forced uh, tieflings to be this very specific, um, mm -hmm. fiendish oriented kind of uh, peoples, which is like interesting in its own way, but also sort of sad that it's minimized. Yeah. But, you know. Guy and I have a game that we used to, or sorry, Sock and I used to have a game we used to play called uh, Tiefling or Drenai. Drenai's are from World of Warcraft, and oh right, <laughs> and so we literally, <laughs> Guy would send me an image and be like, "Is this Drenai fan art? Or is this a Tiefling?" And I almost guessed wrong every time because they are <laughs> so similar. And then <laughs> maybe I could just do it. Hey, guy, one. remember remember Blue Tybalt? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's a Magic the Gathering, uh, like, devilkin type um, main character. I say main mm. character. He's just a recurring planeswalker, someone that can uh, travel between planes, D&D um, &D style planes. Um, yeah. And, and blue, uh, so Tybalt is normally red. He kind of looks like your typical red tiefling. Guy, you're a... What is going your on? Your screen is going crazy. Um and uh, the guy and I were trying to find examples of like of D and D tieflings. I think it was probably fourth edition that had a bit more of a uh, the Drenai style. And uh, we found we came across Blue Tybalt. Uh, <laughs> just it just for some reason really really broke. I was like, guy, this is a Magic the Gathering card that they just color shifted blue. And I sent it to him. He's like, holy fuck, you are so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, oh, oh, God. 
D and D is a is a very fun way of of, of telling a story. Like, I mean, actual plays just like are, and it, it's yeah, really I mean, interesting it, to hear how like Guy and Hannah, or sorry, um, um, Greg and Hannah talk about like how they like to tell stories through, um, you know, comparing it to like the different types of actual plays we have out there. Your Adventure Zones versus Critical Role, uh, mm-hmm. Dimension Twenty, Dungeons and Daddies. Like they all kind of tell a narrative in a very different way. Some are much more like uncut. Um, very unscripted adventures like uh, yeah. Critical Role, and then you have a bit more Ghost on a Train style edited, um, highly edited actual plays that feel a bit more um, like tight. Yeah, a bit more tight. Like there's less uh, um, RP breaking or like you know character breaks and stuff like that. It's and there's no right or wrong way to do so, right? It's mm. just yeah. it is up to the user or the listener experience and the player experience, like. I, my players like in my play group would not like to have a more edited style of play because we love just doing dumb shit and laughing at a character and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And not to say that you can't have room for that in an edited actual play, but yeah, we 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 prefer to just like have the cameras on and play D and D like we normally would, uh, and just mm-hmm. maybe with just a little extra in our characters. It's just our play yeah. style. Yeah, um, and like to add on to that, like a lot of that, um, of just like the different styles can also vary just based on like how you produce stuff, right? Like the limitations of your actual sort of like production. Mm-hmm. Um, like Critical Role, for example, like they started off in a room with some cameras on. Um, and like shitty ass audio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't that great. <laughs> had like some mics around i guess in the corners somewhere yeah. um, <laughs> but um no yeah um but also like live sort of like continuous play like that leans in very well for them because they are voice actors or like stage mm-hmm. actors and so that sort of thing like helps with their specific talents um but then you have shows like um like dimension 20 uh, who uh, is based out of like college humor who like did YouTube videos like that was and yeah just video content short form so a lot of that stuff is edited tight like TV because that's the people they get that's the editors they have like that's just how their production is set up mm-hmm. yeah it's definitely their their shtick is a lot more to have that kind of very scripted very um, intentional design mm. to it um and it you know it and it does more scripted yeah and they're does... all a bunch of improvisers so yeah exactly and it, but it works for them um it's just it's just cool um i i love that um narrative storytelling and and uh how, how we've been doing it for um our campaign is so Pip, Pip and McKeel and my character are very similar in that our we we kind of have an amnesiac backstory we don't actually know our past and we are working with our dm to reveal that as a secret to the player and and because i greg was talking a little bit about that with uh with um socks uh character in ghost on train uh pip in that you both will kind of work on a fact together and kind of how to reveal that and you are building the backstory can you can you actually touch a bit more on that uh, uh sock oh geez so when we started, uh, what this this required? What is going on with my background? But <laughs> uh, this required like a lot of like trust from me and like Greg to also trust in me as mm-hmm. well. I'm gonna make that my primary window. So uh, I wanted to basically like have a character without a backstory, like give them give them kind of nothing to start out with and then like we will both kind of like periodically like add stuff and it was like a a collaborative experience basically like we're all kind of like building this character into the world so they feel more integrated and all that uh and only like fairly recently did we reach a point where they're kind of like settled in i guess Mm -hmm. but it's it's been a very fascinating kind of like growth and setup of this character just like very like steadily like developing them out uh starting from nothing and then just like if there's something that gets talked about that like kind of interested by like ooh, i'll grab that like add that in uh 
or if Greg wants to do something. So it became this interesting kind of like back and forth, this like push and pull of like me adding stuff and Greg adding stuff. And then we kind of just like basically yes anded a character over the course of probably like 30 episodes. That's awesome. So, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So my, my tiefling bard, Rashak, who um, we basically, I decided that like, it was my first D&D character ever. So like my play styles kind of changed. So I started multi-classing into sorcerer and things like that. And we wanted kind of a very like strong in universe reason that we had, like my character had this awakening of powers. So starting in our second big book, we had a fall that actually like a bunch of us hit our head and like some changes occurred that we were able to like very much settle into our character. Somehow uh, Gabe went from a Scottish accent to a Russian accent for his dwarf. Um, and the real reason for that is that Gabe cannot hold a Scottish accent for very long, but he can always do a Russian accent. So, so Gabe is just constantly in a Russian accent now for Darkin. Um, and uh, Ryan, uh, it's character Tear, hit his head. He talks like this now, and he he swings on motherfuckers and just you know wants to beat the shit out of them. Uh, just like this, like very like rednecky, like very kind kind redneck that just I just I just want to swing on someone. <laughs> like, and uh, my character started to unlock his sorcerer powers, and the the way Brian and I are doing this is that my character doesn't have a backstory before. He was maybe like nine or ten years old. Hmm. He doesn't remember much before that. He lived with his aunt, and um, the I was like, right, Brian, I want to come up. I want you and I to come up with a. Actually, I'm going to trust you to do this. I want you to give my character the backstory and how it ties into the greater uh, universe we had. And so, essentially, what's going to happen is. Um, my character had like a paradigm shift where he's getting these visions at night and he's seeing this figure in his, his dreams. And, um, one day he asked me to roll an intelligence saving throw right before the big bad boss of, uh, getting in, in book four. And I failed and he says, okay, Tony, go into Gabe's room. Cause Brian and Gabe, Brian, are our DM and, and Gabe dark slash dark and live together. And he's like, go into Gabe's room and I'll call you. And it's ready when you're ready to come out. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and in that time, my character kind of snapped and went through a full, like, power swap. And yeah. um, instead of being level 10 bard, level 3 sorcerer, my character essentially was able to shift to a level 10 sorcerer, level 3 bard. Because the awesome. playstyle of a sorcerer was a bit more of, like, what I was enjoying. And he always had an NPC that kind of played support. And we had a druid that played support. So we were kind of a little... Mm. A fireball light if you know what i mean uh <laughs> and, and and so we had this uh, my character snapped actually killed our favorite goblin npc that we befriended oh, we made we gave him daggers we knitted him armor so he could join us in the final battle and my character just disintegrated him <laughs> and i didn't know what happened until i came back and the play other player characters had my character pinned down and my character has now lost um the trust of his friends um, and has these powers he doesn't understand. And I still don't really know why my mm. character narratively has had this switch. Um, and so that's just like a fun bit of world building that like we were able to do. And I really love Brian's story. And I'm, I think in book five, we get to explore that. Um, and we all just have like these awesome stories we're exploring in, in his campaign. I guess what's fun with like TTRPG stuff is like the fact that you can mess with like agency in that way and the fact that the player is choosing to do things so when you take that away it completely messes with it in very interesting ways i've done something similar in one of my games that i'm running it's basically almost the same thing kind of where mm -hmm. just occasionally uh, roll a wisdom save and then if you fuck it up then <laughs> you get possessed by this person and it's just like i don't know i think it's a fun kind of thing to mess with like mm -hmm. like that um especially when that's kind yeah. of uh i will say that um <laughs> Actually, I, w I want to talk about my funniest experience uh, as a dungeon master recently. Um, actually, probably ever so far. Um, in that, um, it, it led to great narrative, um, and I think it'd be great um, if it were on a podcast um, where, like, um, the, this was this is my home game with Hannah and Greg and some of our other friends, 
and uh, we uh, had uh, they were trying to help one of the other players, his parents, uh, come back like come back out of like a rage, but unexpectedly they ended up having to fight this sort of uh, this angel um, that was just like very antagonistic towards them. Um, so um, at the end of the fight, uh, I gave it this ability. Um, called Agent of Rebirth. Now, it's not what you think it is. It's worse. (laughs) Where uh, the thing explodes when it dies. But if it takes you out with it, you turn into an egg. Oh, Oh. shit. Fuck yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, in like a a week or less, you, (laughs) you come out the egg half your age. Shit. That's so cool. Oh. <laughs> and so Hannah, Hannah's character, the wizard Kiri, um, I, I, I didn't realize it, but mostly just because it, it she was hitting me with fireballs and I didn't like it. <laughs> no, cones of cold. Uh, I was like, you know what? We're hitting that wizard. We're hitting that wizard. And then uh, at the end of the fight, uh, Kiri dropped to zero. And I was like, oh no, I didn't actually expect this to, to take anyone out. Oh no. <laughs> And now, um, after a few days, uh, she pops out of the egg as an 11 year old. And so <laughs> after this current adventure, that's, that's something we're going to have to resolve. Shit. <laughs> I was going to say, Hannah, uh, uh, Hannah plays a younger, uh, um, how old is Andrew? Like 13, 14, like teenager? Yeah, like 13, uh, remember, right? 13. Good. How much? I think how much time has passed in the goat universe? Uh, not a lot of time at all. Oh, okay. So maybe just oh, a like few a months or something. Handful of months, right? Yeah, I think we're like maybe six months tops. Okay, so Angel is still still young, even though I'm not completely caught up to the end. Um, so like, yeah. I, I expected Han- like Hannah to play like a like a fourteen year old wizard and then come out a seven year old. That would have been no, no. But I mean, twenty two to eleven is a big difference too. You're grown ass adult to yeah. to, to how did child. You, how did you do like abilities and stuff? Did you just like half the level and then? No, we just kept it the same since okay. like at least especially since like she's a wizard. So like all that really matters so, is like her brain. Yeah. yeah <laughs> um. Where do you so, work out? Do the I library. I mean, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it was a, uh, it, it was the most D and D experience that I have ever had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. And uh, it's one of those things that I think, uh, even if I didn't expect it to happen, is a very sort of like narrative defining moment because, mm. like, oh, like. Uh, if you are literally half your age, like that can mean a lot depending on like how old you are, um, what and depending on what kind of ancestry you are in D and D. Like in a, to an elf, maybe that doesn't matter too much. Yeah. Uh, to a human, though, like if you're like maybe in your seventies, you're thirty five again. Yeah. You're like yeah, <laughs> that's you're back to youth. Um, or then you get something like Kiri, who turns into a pre peasant child. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that is interesting. If you had like an old character, they'd be like, no, no, take me next, take me next. <laughs> like, you're like, yes, please take me back to the, 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 my the golden age of my character. <laughs> now, so would uh, I don't I don't remember if you touched on this. Like, would there are they still mentally eleven at that time? Um, or, I have sort of left that to Hannah. Okay. Um, to, Decide really. Um, this was like I said. This is a very D and D type of situation. Uh-huh. Not really something that is that I mean to like pull out super much, in, like narratively or like as an experience. Um, at this point, um, I mean there have been sort of like um, specific things like how um, uh, her character like really likes the alcohol to the, um, but like now that she's 11 it she can't really experience it the same anymore Mm. uh it just doesn't work so um that's been a thing but otherwise uh anything like major uh outside of that i generally leave to hannah to (laughs) to deal with yeah giving players agency is really 
really interesting. It, running a game is hard. I just had my first experience with the D&D starter kit because I wanted to get my... My nephew who has been into Stranger Things, really wanted to play. And, and my brother and I have been playing World of Warcraft since 2005. Uh, he's no, he's much older than, he, uh, than I. He's 39 now. Um, uh, and I was like, well... JJ, you should play with us because you you will just get it. Like, because you play World of Warcraft, you understand what it's like to start at level one and have mm. just Sinister Strike on your rogue, um, and that's it. And then you know, gain levels and play style changes. And and so he's like super into it and things like that. And I, I the first ever session we ran, um, I did not ingress my. I didn't get to like study the book as much as i wanted to with the npcs and like kind of the world that that mm. the, the book is building it's lost mind of Fandolin. it's a classic starting adventure um mm-hmm. and i i was like man i am woefully unprepared and it was i had a hard time getting my nephew to feel like really involved because he's with ryan who's 26 he's with brian or 27 and then brian is um also around my age like we're all older and then my nephew's 13 um, right, okay. And I'm yeah. like, man, I should have I should have had more devices in place to interact with them because we're in a cave full of goblins. I have no inner NPCs to yeah. to like really like help him push his character along. Um, mm-hmm. And then by the time we got to the second uh, session, when we got to the town, he wanted to hang out with his cousins. And it was just me and my brother, uh, Ryan and Brian. Also, the first session, there was my nephew, Orion my best friend ryan and then our dm brian so i'm like you all are going by character names do not say each other's names i'm gonna get so confused ryan brian or ryan are you fucking kidding me (laughs) regret and uh so the second session i was like i read you know very far ahead i'm like okay well if they decide to skip town entirely we're gonna go to the castle and then you know i maybe will be more prepared and it is um, when you are prepared. It's easier to let your players have that agency react the way and like an NPC would react. You know, these aren't characters I created; they're characters I had to kind of study um, and know about what they know and things like that. And um, I felt like the second play, th- you know, our second session was much more fun for everyone even though there was like no encounters. It was all RP and shopping, and uh, and we made it really fun. So. Shout out to all the really good DMs out there. This shit is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's really rewarding, it's though. Easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to I'd like to keep working on that because I'm not I don't feel like I'm comfortable enough as um, a creator and a writer to like make my own like world or anything yet. And I think that's like I'm OK with that. Um, I want to keep buying the, the the modules and like take them, maybe take these characters to level five through ten in like another book um and work on my dm skills that way and i think that also gives me a chance to learn a bit more about the uh forgot realms lore and how they do storytelling or like that kind of collaborative yeah. storytelling um so i'm really excited to and i've learned a lot from listening to our panelists this weekend um about narrative building and how to you know yeah. the improv um section was was really 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 fun um i don't know if anyone got to check that mm-hmm. out but it was a good time. Yeah, I was there. I was there for all of them. So. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were able to listen in. Yeah, the narr- the improv and actual play one was awesome. I wanted Brian, my DM, to join, but he fell ill on Friday. Uh, unfortunately. Like, Damn it. I was like, you would be great in this conversation, too, because everyone kind of had different styles of, of storytelling and DMing. Um, Brian basically wrote a JRPG, of a kind of a more linear JRPG, so we don't had we haven't had a lot of freedom of like talking to NPCs and doing side quests and stuff yet, but we will in the next big arc that we do. Um, mm. okay. And uh, going from something like that. And then guy uh, guy ran or sorry, sock ran a, um, a little mini campaign for me um, um, and my roommate Cora and Emma at the time um, with, and uh, who was with us for that? Uh, uh, that would be my friend mask mask. It was mask. Um, I, I remembered them recently because Brian was playing a druid with Shillelagh and bonked a lot. Bonking with Shillelagh at level one is so strong. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like Shillelagh uh, is like oh, nearly useless at the higher levels from like an actual <laughs> combat perspective, and is just like busted at level one and two. It's <laughs> uh, a fun little spell. Yeah, it is. My staff is now very very hard and hits very <laughs> very hard. I love it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and you ran a very kind of gritty, very RP based and kind of very choice based. And that was, you know, kind of the opposite experience um, from Brian's. And I learned a lot yeah, from playing with you. It was that was a very hard campaign. I could tell you guys were like super vibing with it. And it's like, all right, let's I was do having I was definitely having a great time. But I think maybe for Emma's first time, it was a little nitty gritty. Um, it was it was a little, little hard for Emma. Yeah. But. I, th I think we came up with something a little bit better when I did come down and visit and we did the, uh, oh, the little yeah. bunch of things. So we did no narrative D&D, uh, &D, um, kind of inspired by one of my favorite mm -hmm. games, Dungeon Keeper, uh, Dungeon Keeper 2 specifically, where you basically built... Guy had us um, build like a... A, a passageway with like traps and mini mobs and bosses mm -hmm. based on a, a certain amount of GP. And so you could buy traps for a certain amount of gold and things like that. And you'd have to set up this gauntlet of, uh, of shit for players to go through. And then they would make a party, pick their characters. Yeah. And then um, you had pre-made character sheets, right? I had pre-made character sheets and basically like everyone else that hadn't built the, uh, the gauntlet would be like playing the pre-mades and trying to like survive through it. <laughs> It took I think so one much longer. Person actually succeeded. Yeah, I don't think we even got to. Uh, I think we got through what one one map maybe, because it took way longer than we expected. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, fun. Such, a, fun such an AD and D idea. <laughs> oh Just yeah, making a death that's, trap that's of a old school. Yeah, mine were basically like rooms. Like I had like no traps. I basically just had like arenas. So you enter here, there is a centaur. You enter here, there is you know a, a wolf pack and a, a big ringling or leader. And then like I just threw the biggest bad that I had money left at the end. Like challenge rating like really 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 high. And um, how did did you have the like enemies pre made or did we have to like go through the monster manual or something for that? I don't remember. Uh, I I think we had them in the monster manual, but like I, I had like I had the pages linked and all that, so it was, it was relatively right because you had to assign GP to everything that we put in there, and so that was like mm -hmm. a really fun experience, even though that's not anything near to building. That is like a fun, that was a very, very entertaining little improv uh section, yeah, yeah. That, that you're right, Banani. That is like the most nonsensical D and D thing that you can do. <laughs> uh, um, what games are you playing right now, okay. Banani? Um, let's see. Uh, I am. I'm mostly just running, though. I am in one D and D game. Uh, but yes, I'm running one. I'm running three D and D games, uh, and one Lancer game. Uh, and I, I, it's a. I'm not gonna lie. The, the Lancer game is sort of my favorite of the week, but, but that's mostly just because of like the players. <laughs> um, like it, they're really good performers, and it's just been a lot of fun making stuff happen with them. Um, that being said, I like Lancer a lot. It's a very fun game. People should mm -hmm. play it if you want to. If you like giant robots, play Lancer. <laughs> I just started running one for my uh, group of friends. I like, was going to say, it sounded familiar. Three session thing. It's fucking amazing. I love it so much. Right? It's, it's great. <laughs> oh, we've got to finish. So we started playing. Uh, so it was me, Kai, Banani, and Greg were playing Shoot and Loot. Or Loot and Shoot. Yeah, shoot and Loot. Shoot and Loot. And uh, that's yeah, really yeah. fun. And we also, we have the Cobb finale, or yeah, the Cobb finale oh, actual play that we need to uh, do you know at what? some point. We also, we so we could always <laughs> roll that into, like, we need to do another charity event to finish off the the um, the abortion funds charity event that we had started. Yeah. Um, and we could always roll that together. Um, I, honestly, yeah, I'm happy yeah. to have like a big, or like, you know, I think I could, at most I can maybe handle seven players for shooting loot because it is quite like, and there's not that many things to, to really mm -hmm. kind of think about before you turn. Um, it is quick. Think, and there's, there's, there is yeah. some RP if, you know, you're having fun with it, but yeah, um, it is definitely very um, action oriented. At least the way I run it, it's definitely, I just, I just, you know, I like the, this is here, this is this many people that you have to get past. Mm -hmm. you know i like i like i mean you know i do like doing uh, rp stuff uh my, my players aren't super like rp like they they do it but not as much as like not a huge amount so um mm -hmm. i think i'm not i'm a little Ooh. bit out of practice with running rp stuff but you know yeah 
Um, I mean, so when we have the panels up, there is a lot of really good um, advice when it comes to player engagement with RPing and how do you mm. set them up for success in role playing, even if they're not trained in RP. You know, Erin yeah, was in that and was talking about her experiences uh, with being like formally trained in improv um, and how that's not really necessary to to get yeah. some good um, RPing and improv from your players. It's really about the environment you set. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be reviewing that one and learning a lot more for it. I was, I was there for it, listening in, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I definitely want to study that panel a little closer. There's Jeff has yeah, been running cool. games forever. Since like first edition, I think you said. So <laughs> D&D first edition. Like when it was basically a war game. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Should we uh, wrap things up? Oh, so yeah. The, yeah. The next panel. Yeah, so the next panel starts in about seven minutes or so. It's going to be about teamwork at a distance. Uh, we'll have Larry, who does uh, Project Audion. They have, um, I sent Kai this, but they, they basically do live Foley and then live, mm -hmm. like, they all record in the Zoom call together Ooh. and do all the sound effects while they're, in, like, talking and stuff like that live, um, like a, like an old school kind of, like, live play show. Um, it's really cool. Um, it'll be very interesting to hear how they coordinate that so efficiently. And um, Hannah obviously can be able to speak from experience with um, super suits. So it should be a really mm -hmm. good panel mm -hmm. uh, because we almost, except for uh, Amy and Jackie, you know, living very close by, everything in super suits was done remote. Maybe Hannah and, and, and Greg were chatting a bit, but, you know, it's it is a hugely ambitious project that was done completely um mm. over distance um so mm -hmm. yeah it'd be very insightful to hear what they have to say thank you all for joining me this morning i was I, I was afraid i wasn't gonna have anyone here with me and then i was graced with all of y'all so thank you so much uh, anything well, funny y'all want to plug uh while you're here anything you're working on want to plug uh well i would plug my stream but that's kind of at the same time as other stuff is going on so i will not do that I will do it for you because people <laughs> should follow you on Twitch. So let me find you. Sock underscore doodums. Um, oh, what time you. are you streaming today? I am streaming at one. We will be doing uh, either Franbo or Sam and Max season two remastered. I haven't nice. decided which. I'm going to flip a coin and then make the announcement. Very nice. Uh, Kai, you, bud? anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I do an audio drama called Chain of Being that, um, as we had a discussion about how to describe it, so just refer back to that. Um, it's it's fun. I like doing it a lot. I just finished the first season, so it's like a full story that you can go in and listen to. I'm currently working on season two. Peep um, that trailer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that I will, trailer. The season two is going to be good. I'm very excited for it. I'm trying lots of new things and even though it's less opportunity for weird stuff, I want it to be weirder than the previous one. So I've mm -hmm. given myself that challenge to make it as bizarre as I can. Um, uh, and I do uh, the the sort of end of the scale of bizarreness. I do uh, noise music where you can find that uh, at Bandcamp at Dinas, which is D-I-N-A-S, which I just popped there. Oh, there we go. There it is. Um, yeah, I just make I make I make sound art. I, you know, I think it's great. I love doing it. It makes me so happy. I haven't done it recently, but um, yeah, give it a listen. And cool. Banani, what about you? Anything you want to plug? Anything you're working on that you'd like the public to know about? Uh, let's see. Nothing that is particularly imminent. Um, at least uh, I do have a store. I only have like one product up on itch right now. Um, so bit of uh D, D player content called the diary of darker days um basically it's sort of uh my pitch is sort of like a dark fantasy sort of uh oriented stuff so there's some player content there's some magic items um a, a tiny bit of lore in there i guess for this setting um but i've been making up whole cloth um but yeah otherwise um I'd be making stuff. Um, you do be making I, stuff. Yeah, at some point, you'll probably see a product that I worked on uh, around, I don't know when that one's coming out. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Really. <laughs> uh, oh, also, I mean, there's technically, uh, well, not technically, but we might have something working in uh, for for some anime stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we'll see that. that sounds exciting. We all like anime here, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know Guy and I nerd over um, anime pretty often. Like, uh, mm-hmm. um, Guy, ca- ca- when he came to visit, uh, or Sock, I keep, I keep calling you your real name. I'm so sorry. When Sock came to visit, <laughs> uh, we were watching, I'm blanking on it. What the hell is the giant mech anime? That's amazing. SSS Gridman. Gridman. I almost SSS. said Dy- Dynamax, and that is Pokemon and not that's, Di- no, Di- that's... whatever. <laughs> That's 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 yeah, Dianzenon. That's cool. we did that not get that. Uh, so I was very far off on all that, but yeah, we're all a bunch of nerds here in chat anime. Um, cool. Okay. Thank you all so much for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you for the yeah. next. Uh-huh. See you for the next panel. Cool. Bye. Thank you for listening to Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. We invite you to continue the amazing audio tomorrow on Mutual with the Monday Matinee. Our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio dramas. You can subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed every day for the world's largest curated collection of audio drama. Or find the Monday Matinee feed in your favorite podcast players. See you tomorrow at the Matinee, and thanks so much for listening. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.